All right, so let's chat about finite differences. Finite differences is something that we sort of hit on in a lot of our classes, but we do it kind of briefly, so people tend to maybe forget about it a little bit. Um, but basically, finite differences will help me if I have a set of, or I have a table of values, and I want to know the degree. They can also help me find information about the leading coefficient as well. So when I do finite differences, I will continue the columns along until I get a column that has a constant value. And all I mean by that is, is it just has the same number in that column. So once you get to that constant value in your column, you will stop. We used finite differences in grade 9 and 10 to determine if something was a line or a quadratic. Now we're going to continue using these to determine degrees that are higher. So here's how we use finite differences. We always do bottom minus top, and we just do subtractions and see what numbers we get until we get into a column that's constant. So in this case, for instance, we would do negative 24 minus negative 11. Okay, so remember guys, always bottom minus top. If you do top minus bottom, you won't get the correct answers for these, and you'll have to redo all of it. I also just want to encourage you guys, like, be careful with your subtractions here and your negatives and positives, because if you make one mistake, it's going to affect everything that you do after that column. Okay, so bottom minus top for each thing here. And I'm just going to grab a calculator right away here, because I know that I'm going to probably make a mistake if I try to do this in my head. Okay, so first finite differences are not constant here. If my first finite differences are constant, that means I'm dealing with a line. If they're not constant, I go to the second differences, and I calculate second differences by taking the first differences and doing the exact same thing I just did, bottom minus top, for each set of numbers here. So we're going to continue along. So you can see if I make a mistake in my first differences, then the rest of the differences that I calculate will also be incorrect, so just be careful. Okay, so again, I do not have a column that is constant. They're all different. If I did have a column that was constant here, that would tell me I have a quadratic function. If I don't, I'm going to continue. Okay, making sure that I'm being, again, careful with my math so that I don't mess up and then keep going to like the fifth finite differences when I don't need to. Um, so we're going to do bottom minus top for each of these. And we actually get negative 12 for all of these. I can stop once I have that, right? These are all negative 12s, which is good. And what this actually tells me is that the degree of my polynomial is 3. 
And this tells me the degree is 3 because my set of third finite differences all have the same number. Does not matter what that number is. It just matters that that's happening in the column for the third finite differences. So this polynomial must be degree 3. Or in other words, a cubic polynomial, cubic function, because the third finite differences are constant. If you do this and you get to a column that starts to have maybe like some values that are the same and then there's like one or two values that aren't, you probably made a mistake somewhere over here. Like if I got negative 12, negative 12, and like 10, I probably made some sort of mistake earlier. So just go back and, and check, your, check your work there. Okay, if I do top minus bottom, I'm just going to mess the whole thing up and... I'm going to keep going, and I will never get constant values. Okay, so always bottom minus top. <clears throat> okay, so the column that I get a constant value in will tell me about degree, and I can actually use this value here. Okay, so this is where this value is like important, is there's a formula that relates the degree this value, which we call the constant difference value, and the leading coefficient. So if I know two pieces of information, I can find the third. So here's the formula. The constant difference value, which is this value, the one that is constant in the, <coughs> excuse me, the one that is constant in the column. So constant difference value. <coughs> is equal to degree, and then this is a math symbol, so it's like an exclamation mark. I'll talk about that in a second. It's called factorial, degree factorial, times the leading coefficient. So if I know degree and I know the constant difference value, I can find leading coefficient. Or if I know constant difference value and I know leading coefficient, I can find degree. If I know any two, I can find the third. So let's talk about this factorial symbol here. Some people, if you guys took data management maybe like early last year, you may know what this symbol does. Does anybody know? Jess? Okay, so the factorial uh, symbol is like a function, right? It's like something like it tells us to do something to our number, same way that a square root tells us to do something to a number. So factorial basically means take that number and multiply it by every whole number below it until you reach one. Okay, so factorial, take the value and multiply it by every number below it until, or I guess we'll say up to one. or down to one. That makes more sense. Okay, so example, five factorial means five times four times three times two times one. Okay, so we multiply five by every number below it um, until we hit one. So this is gonna be 20 times six, so that's gonna give us 120.
if you don't do the factorial, the formula, the relationship does not hold up here. So just make sure that you're doing that factorial. There is on most calculators, um, probably you have a factorial hidden somewhere away in like a st statistics menu or something. Um, we don't really need it. Like I, I don't even know personally where it is on my calculator because I don't really, like we're not gonna have a degree of like 20 where you're gonna have to do 20 factorial. Um, if you do, then I mean you can you could put it all into your calculator, um, but I'm not gonna give you something so high that it's gonna take you like three minutes to enter it all into your calculator. Doing five times four times three times two times one is pretty quick. We don't necessarily need the factorial button. Okay, so for our example above, our table of values value above, we want to find the leading coefficient um, using that constant difference formula. So I know the degree is 3, and I know the constant difference in this column is negative 12. I'm going to plug those into the formula. I'm going to find the leading coefficient. So I'm just going to say constant difference value is equal to degree factorial. I mean, we don't necessarily need to rewrite the equation, but, and then I'm just gonna use LC for leading coefficient. So constant difference value above is negative 12, and our degree above is three. So this is gonna be three factorial. Okay, I'm just gonna highlight this as a reminder. Okay, so what does this mean I have to do to three then? How would I do this calculation now that we know what factorial is? Victoria? Three, it would be six. Yes, so how'd you get that? Three times three times okay, perfect. So multiply three by everything below it until you hit one. So that means it would be six as Victoria said. And then all I need to do is just divide that six out to get my leading coefficient. So what is the leading coefficient here? Negative two. Perfect. And now I know the degree, I know the leading coefficient. Now I know about n behavior now that I know those two things. So it just gives us a little bit more information about that polynomial. Sophia. Any questions on this? Anything I can clarify? So don't forget the factorial. Okay, I'm going to stop this one.